Hello? Yeah, you're on my mouse phone. Mouse phone. Yeah, it's totally a real thing. Why wouldn't it be? Look, I gotta do a bunch of important Windows XP things, so I'll call you back. Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by PCBWay. So many retro computing projects that we've come to depend on started with prototyping via PCBWay.com. In no small part due to their great pricing and turnarounds as fast as 24 hours. Just take a look through their shared project sections where you can find absolute gems like this amazing entire Apple One clone. So if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. The Curtis Telemouse came out at the tail end of the 1990s into a tech market that was still trying to figure out how normal people were going to be using computers. Now, sure, a mouse with a built-in landline telephone seems pretty weird, but you and I, we have the advantage of hindsight. Back in the 90s, any idea could be a good idea, and it was anyone's guess what the future of computers was going to look like. I mean, you were already connecting your computer to a landline telephone so you could use your modem to connect to the internet. Why not stick a phone inside your mouse so you didn't have to have a whole separate telephone next to your computer? From that perspective, I don't think this thing is really that far-fetched. And if you'd like to learn more about the history of this mouse, as well as the atmosphere of anything goes 90s innovation that spawned it, I'll put a link in the description below to a Tedium article written by my friend Ernie, who is also the person who introduced me to this mouse. After he posted a picture of it to Twitter, I discovered there is an entire universe of these things on eBay and I was able to score this still sealed new old stock, Curtis Telemouse. But as interesting as the history is, this is action retro. So let's answer the most important question of all. What was this thing like to actually use? All right, we've got our trusty unboxing knife. Let's crack this thing open. All right, so in the box here, we have our Curtis Telemouse, of course, which is nice. Ooh, that's very clicky. I really like the clickiness of those buttons. And then we have our super weird cable selection because this mouse has both a PS2 connector and a phone line. Split off into one single respectably long cable that's now all tangled up. Also in the box here, we have some kind of a headset. So it said it had speakerphone. I did not realize it also had this weird over the ear microphone. I guess we'll have to test out and see what this sounds like. And then we've got warranty information and instructions which I'm sure we're not going to need. I mean, it's a telephone. What more can you ask for? And this is what that weird over-the-ear microphone sounds like, just plugged in directly to my little amplifier that's on top of my camera. Now, I've never owned a landline in my entire life, which begs the question, how are we actually going to test this thing? So after a bit of digging around on Amazon, I found this, which is the Cell 2 Jack. And basically what this is, it's marketed to people who have poor reception for their cell phone in their house. And what they can do is this connects via Bluetooth to their cell phone. And then it has a jack, which connects to your landline telephone. And the thought is you put your cell phone somewhere in your house that actually has service. And then this routes all calls via Bluetooth from your cell phone to your landline. And outgoing calls work and incoming calls work. And they even tout like you can use Siri through this. So it's pretty interesting. And yeah, I'm excited to see if this is going to work. 
So I think the best computer to test this on is the weird AMD Sempron desktop that we picked up to flash the G4 Cubes graphics card because not only does this have PS2 ports, but it also has front mounted USB, which will make it very easy to power our cell to jack. And I've plugged in the mouse and it works and well, it's a little bit awkward to hold. It's like a very long, long mouse. It's like twice as long as you'd expect a mouse to be. So the buttons feel like they're really far away from where your palm is sitting on the end of the mouse, but it is nice and clicky. And I mean, it does mouse things, so that's good. So yeah, this is definitely a mouse, but yeah, very awkward to use. Uh, and very heavy, much heavier than I would expect. Although probably that's because it's a, a ball mouse and I'm so used to laser mice at this point. So I guess the next step is let's connect this to the cell to jack and see what happens. All right, there's a blue light on the front of the device that lit up, that's good. And it wants to do a found new hardware wizard, which, uh, no, let's not deal with that right now. I don't think there's any anything to actually install. And yeah, let's connect this to the, the port. All right, it is now blinking red at me, so that's probably good. Mouse still works. I guess we ought to see what the instructions say. Okay, so as I was reaching for the instructions, I could have swore I heard a voice talking and it's this. This is actually saying things to me. It's saying in a very garbled manner, warning, phone is not connected. Let's see if you can hear this. Warning, phone is not connected. Yeah, so if that's what we have to look forward to for call quality, uh, that's a little disappointing, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Pulling out the instructions here. So step one, connect your home phone to your cell to jacks phone port. And this is our home phone right here. We are connected. We have power connected. That's step two. And now step three, let's connect Bluetooth. So for first time setup, pick up your home phone off hook <laughs> and press pound star pound from the phone keypad to start pairing and the red LED should start flashing and I'll hear pairing. Okay, so let's see. Pound, star, pound. Yeah, now it says pairing. All right, next I've gotta take my cell phone out and search for Bluetooth devices. All right, Bluetooth pairing request with cell to jack. Okay, connected for calls. All right, we are now paired. So when your phone finds cell to jack and connects, the red LED should be solid and we should have a dial tone on our mouse. So yeah, solid red. And I guess we have to push the phone button here. No dial tone. All right, well, there's not a dial tone, but the buttons make a sound when you dial. And it's actually a very pleasing phone button sound. Take a listen. I've never heard one that sounds like it's a tin drum or something. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's test this out with a Skype throwaway phone number. All right, I've got the mouse phone connected to the cell two jack, which is connected to my cell phone. So let's give this a call with Skype and see what happens. Oh my God, it's working. My mouse phone is ringing with the most annoying ring I've ever heard in my life. And there's a little 
red LED in there blinking as well. So, yeah, I think maybe we should try to give a real person a call and put them on speakerphone. All right, I dialed. Hello. Hello. You're on my mouse phone. This thing sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it sounds terrible. Like, do I sound garbled? I wonder if it's my weird phone to jack thing. Yeah, that's what you sound like too, like robotic. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna put you on hold on the mouse phone. Tell me what it does. <laughs> well, it plays music on this end. Hello? Do it again and then come here. I want you to hear what it does. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, the sound quality is terrible and it sounds like a robot on both ends. And for some reason, the hold music sounds crystal clear. So I don't know what that's about. Maybe this speaker and microphone are just aging or maybe it's the cell to jack device itself but yeah this is kind of like unusable and yeah there's a lot of different functions on here that i don't think we're really going to need like flash redial speakerphone which didn't work hold works and then memory three memory slots for your uh, most trusted business associates all right, we might as well crack this thing open and see what's inside. I mean, it's not like this monstrosity is going into a museum or something. So first we'll take out the track ball. And then inside we see our kind of standard plastic rollers that all 90s mice had. And then I think there are just two screws underneath this warning label here. And then I think it probably just snaps apart. And there we go. Oh boy, looks like a lot of glue holding this stuff together. So we've got our, I wanna say we've got our telephone and our mouse separate. So it looks like our mouse stuff is on the brown board here. You can see here's the jack that goes with uh, four wires into the cord. And then we have our uh, phone stuff on the green boards. So we have, of course, our microphone and our speaker and uh, the button for picking up the call. And yeah, everything's pretty much glued into place. That is an extreme amount of glue that they've put onto the microphone there. So nothing particularly interesting in here other than the fact that this is basically two completely separate devices shoved into this single enclosure and both routed down the same cable until they split down here. So that's the Curtis Telemouse, a pretty weird and quirky device from the late 90s that tried to integrate a phone into your computer in the best way that 90s science could come up with. And if you think about it, was it really that crazy? I mean, it's 20 something years later and as it turns out, combining a phone and a computer would be the way of the future. So maybe the Curtis Telemouse was just incredibly ahead of its time, technically building something akin to an iPhone, just limited by the common consumer technology available at the time. Or maybe it was just a weird gimmick. So let me know what you think about the Curtis Telemouse in the comments below. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more computer shenanigans, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris, Justin, Sorta Eclectic, and Spike, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make these shenanigans possible.